Hello guys, this is Adriana and in today's video I will be explaining what happened last week and what is expected for next week. I will explain everything I know about the possible stimulus check, review Marriott and Norwegian earnings and give you guys my expectation for Walmart, Home Depot and Nvidia on their next week earnings report. The Federal Reserve gave a warning on Wednesday, May 13th saying that the economy was experiencing an economic heat that could cause a huge permanent damage if there's not enough help provided to Americans. We've seen unemployment numbers rise like crazy and that is already causing a lot of people not being able to pay their mortgages, rents and student loans. We have also seen so many stimulus packages being proposed that now finally the House just passed a bill with something very similar to what we had last time. There is no doubt that we need another round of stimulus and without it we could have a long-term economic damage. Now, take into consideration that this bill that passed the House was proposed by Democrats and they are majority in the House. This now has to go to the Senate which is majority Republicans and then will go to Mr. Trump. What I want to say with this is that yes, the bill of $3 trillion I'm going to explain passed the House but still has a long road ahead before we ever see those new stimulus checks. This could finally be the starting point for talks between Republicans and Democrats, so let's get started. The new bill include up to $6,000 per household divided like this, $1,200 per person that earns $75,000 or less or $2,400 if you file as married couple and between both of you make $150,000 or less. Then instead of receiving $500 per dependent, you will now receive $1,200 up to three dependents, meaning that if you are married and have three kids or more, you will actually get $6,000. Then $200 billion of hazard pay for essential workers that have risked their life working during the pandemic. $175 billion goes to help people with their rents and mortgages payments. Then $75 billion for coronavirus testing, $1 trillion goes to state and local governments, an extra $600 per week for unemployment until January 2021, so next year. Also debt collection relief for student loans which includes $10,000 per student that need reliefs in both federal and private student loans. And then $25 billion for USPS which let me tell you that Mr. Trump is not happy about it he just said that they should just increase their rate. Take into consideration that for us to ever see those checks could take weeks even though we all know the economy needs help to be able to recover. According to the Fed there is a sense, a growing sense, that the recovery will come more slowly than we would like and the longer the pandemic goes the more help we will actually need to open the economy. Now are those checks going to be enough for Americans? They weren't enough last time and people noticed that don't know why they are proposing the same thing if it wasn't enough before. We just have to wait and see what happens, if Republicans pass this bill or if they actually have a counteroffer with a way better plan than this one. Now let's talk about what is going on with the stock market. As I said in my last video, it's crazy how the stock market just keeps going up while the economy is so bad. Unemployment is skyrocketing, businesses are shutting down, being unable to repay their debt. Big companies like JCPenney are filing for bankruptcy and still the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 were up more than 27% since March and the Nasdaq even turned positive year to date on Monday. All this uptrend might be because of different reasons. Interest rates are low meaning that businesses could ask for more money with low interest to continue expanding or just surviving the pandemic. Another reason is that the Fed is pumping money into the economy by bailing out businesses to avoid bankruptcy. Something very important I like to see when investing in the stock market is to take into consideration which companies were strong in time of weakness and which businesses survive after any type of recession or in this case epidemic. For example, businesses like McDonald's, Amazon, Target, Starbucks and Chipotle are companies that are very well positioned during hard times since people will always continue buying things online, will always buy groceries and will always continue eating outside. That is why I always say it's very important to have a very diversified portfolio for moments like this. Now let's check last week's earnings I was interested on, which are Norwegian and Marriott. First, Mario reported a slight decrease in revenue of almost 7% and a whopping 91% decrease on their net income, missing expectations. Still, 
they said that North America occupancy improved to 20% over the last two weeks as global economy slowly reopens. Marriott CFO expects that regional destinations in which people can get there by car will be the first to rebound, as they already saw a peak on demand on places where beaches reopen, for example. On the other hand, Norwegian, with a decrease of 11% on their revenue and actually had a loss of $1.88 billion. Take into consideration that $1.6 billion out of that $1.88 billion were impairment losses, which are basically related to goodwill and trade names. So they actually miss expectations. Their plan to sustain during the pandemic is to reduce operating expenses, capital expenditures, improve debt maturity, which means that they improve their debt conditions for repayment and also secure additional capital. For next week, we have some interest earnings such as Walmart, Home Depot, Kohl's, Target, Lowe's, Nvidia, Best Buy, and Alibaba. For today's video, I will give you guys my expectations for Nvidia, Walmart, and Home Depot. I want to analyze Alibaba with you guys and because of that I will be posting a video on Tuesday talking about it. Nvidia is a company that has been having an exponential growth over the last years except in last year where they had a decline on sales because of a pullback in cryptocurrency mining craze weak in demand in China and decline in data center sales growth. I do really like their balance sheet since they have a current ratio of 7.67 and a total debt to asset ratio of almost 0.3. A company with a strong balance sheet like theirs is very well positioned to come out of the pandemic stronger. I do expect them to do well on their earnings report. They have a very good growth potential in their gaming products and have gotten stronger on their data center business because of their cloud base since people are working from home and using cloud services. Next stock is Walmart. This is a huge company with a market cap of around $356 billion and a P of 24.27. It is obvious that Walmart is a direct Amazon competitor in the e-commerce world. They have been offering more delivery and pickup options since virus started. Walmart even launched a free next day delivery and a grocery delivery membership. Another huge thing they came out during the pandemic is the express delivery in a hundred different stores in which they deliver the groceries to your door in less than two hours and they are looking to expand this service even more to other stores. I'm expecting them to have a good increase in their revenue and net income since, as I said at the beginning, these are the type of companies that are strong during weakness time. Last but not least, Home Depot. With a market cap of around $257 billion and a P of 23.35. They are another solid company which I expect them to have a good increase in their revenue because since the pandemic started, a lot of people decided to improve their homes while buying a lot of supplies. Still, don't really expect an increase in their net income since they have been spending on improvement to its IT system, stores and supply chain which has been affecting their last quarters as well. In my opinion, we still have a very long road to recovery and even more if Americans do not get the help that they need. We still have a huge uncertainty without any vaccination or complete cure. But as long as the Fed keeps bailing out the market, it will continue its uptrend. However, I think that we could have consequences due to some of those Fed's actions but it's too early to know which ones are going to be. I do recommend you watch this video right here and if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you and see you next time.